MLB The Show Tips. Happy All-Star Break, everyone. Instead of a weekly roster prediction in this video, I'm going to talk about guys you want to buy and sell now that may have big second halves. Now, this will be a lot of fun to talk about. These are a lot of opinions, forecasting, and looking at trends from catchers to closers. So we're going to go through all the players like usual, but instead of a plus one or a minus two or something, we're going to talk about buy and sell and the reasons I like them. I want to see your comments below. Who are the guys that you think have a great shot? Maybe you disagree, maybe you agree. So good luck, have fun with this, and happy All-Star break. I am buying Washington Nationals catcher Wilson Ramos. At age 28, his first All-Star game, 13 home runs, 330 average. I love the way he's trending. He's kept a very solid month-to-month -month average going. I believe he continues, and that means the overall should climb. In Miami, JT Romuto give him also a buy rating. I like him. His average only keeps going up as the Marlins now leadoff hitter. He also brings some speed at the catcher position. Now in New York, I'm selling on Brian McCann. His average at 250, pretty normal, on pace for 26 home runs. And you may say at this point, what's not to like about McCann? And I'm, that's fine, you can have him. I just don't see the upside, and therefore, I'm looking for guys who have that upside. Doesn't mean that Rio Muto will be as rated as high as McCann by the end of the season, but if you're looking for guys maybe to invest in now, and that you can ride their wave as they keep climbing, that's what I'm talking about. McCann, I just don't see that. Sell Wellington Castillo of the Diamondbacks. A strong first month with six home runs, but he's only got 10 total, so he hasn't done a whole lot since then. Switching to first base, buy on Will Myers. He has a very real chance to go 30-30 this season. 30 home runs, 30 steals, and do that at first base, which is pretty rare. In Baltimore, I'm buying on Mark Trumbo. A 288 average may not stay there forever, but 28 home runs is for real. We're talking about a 40 to 50 home run guy. I bet on that. His attributes may not have either caught up with him in real life yet. So with that said, just be aware an injury is possible or a second half slump. He's been known to do that. Cincinnati first baseman Joey Votto, sell. He's still drawing walks. I like that but the power potential, I just don't see it. Now, he's one of those guys who could still find a way to hit 30 home runs, but I'm not buying a diamond upgrade, and so therefore, I'm selling on him. In Chicago, the White Sox first baseman, Jose Abreu, it's really hard to believe that this slugger is on pace for 20 home runs for the whole season, but it's a very real possibility. Could he get hot and be easily a buy low right now? I'm not betting on it. Over to second base, I'm buying Daniel Murphy of the Washington Nationals. He's proven he can sustain a high batting average, hit for some power, and that 86 overall is not the ceiling for him. In Detroit, I'm less confident, but I'm still buying on Ian Kinsler. He's cooled off over the last month, but he's on pace to match some of his best power totals when he used to be a Texas Ranger. So I'm willing to throw some stubs towards Kinsler, 34 years old though, so don't invest too heavily. I'm selling on Robinson Cano of the Mariners. Until he can hit for a better average against lefties, Cano will only remain a high gold. That's his ceiling, and which is why I would sell. I'm also going to sell on Boston Red Sox second baseman Dustin Pedroia. Speaking of Grizzly veterans, I'm not saying he's going to have a bad second half. Remember, that's not the discussion here. I just don't see a huge opportunity for Pedroia to really be upgraded much the rest of the way. And that's why I'm selling on Ben Zobrist as well. I think we know what Pedroia and Zobrist are. They're excellent players. You may love them in the show. I just don't see a lot of upgrade potential, so I think he's hit his ceiling. Over to third base, I am buying on Todd Frazier. Maybe the loss in the home run derby to John Carlos Stanton will lead to a big second half surge for Frazier, who still looks like a terrific power hitter. We've seen that all year, actually. So his average is really what needs to climb to make him go back to gold again. I don't know if we're seeing any trends that he's going to get that, but I'm willing to invest a little. In Minnesota, I'm buying on Miguel Sano. Now, he had a tough first half because he was hurt a lot of it, but Sano has the potential to swat 40 home runs in a full season. So in the second half, I really don't see a whole lot of reason why he couldn't at least get to 15 or 20 and maybe increase that average. That's the key to his success in going to that next level at gold. In Tampa Bay, I'm selling on Evan Longoria. He became gold and might have really given you his best value at this point. Now, can his overall rise a little if he stays hot, which he has been. He has been trending in the right direction, but I'm just not sure if he ever makes a huge impact by going to Diamond. I don't see that. 
So hopefully at this point you're understanding how I'm making these predictions. Hey, they're on my own opinion. Make sure you're leaving your comments below if you don't agree with them, that's fine. Let's go to shortstop where I'm buying on Francisco Lindor a 2020 season with elite defense already there on the ratings. Makes Lindor a high gold or even low diamond possibility. I truly believe that. The future is really bright for this kid. And Carlos Correa, could he go back up to a high gold, possibly diamond? Absolutely. Right now in his career, his very young MLB career, he's logged over a full season. He's hit 270 for that combined one year if you look at last year into this one. But right now, this season, he's only hitting 260. So I think that average could come back up. He's actually doing pretty well right before the All-Star break. So I think between the contact rating coming up, maybe a little power, we could see a good second half from Correa and some more room to grow. Now in Los Angeles, Corey Seager is putting together that great year. But I'm going to sell on him because I think his overall rests mostly with his hitting stats. Average defense, average speed. So he's already the best hitting shortstop not named Trevor Story. And his contact ratings are also really elite. So unless he decides to hit like 350 or something crazy the rest of the way, I think Seager stays put around this gold area where he is. He's still incredibly useful though. I know a lot of you guys love him. So you can keep him. I'm just saying I don't see a whole lot more value with that overall the rest of the way. He's kind of maxing it out. And speaking of story, I'm going to sell on him. The first month or so was absolutely storybook for him. But since April, story stats have kind of been solid, but not star worthy. So I'm not buying any more stock unless he shows the ability to hit for more contact. And he really should. He's in Coors Field. In left field, I'm buying on Christian Yelich of the Marlins. He's really close to going gold at the 84 high silver. So to make a small investment and see if he can get over that hump, maybe with a stronger second half, especially in the power department if he hits some home runs. Now I'm selling on Ryan Braun of the Brewers. He was trending down in June in the beginning of July, and I won't be surprised if his batting average dips right around 300, and that could lead to some contact downgrades in the second half. Over to center field, a big name who used to be a diamond, I'm going to buy on Andrew McCutcheon. Just before the All-Star break, Kutch was starting to string together some multi-hit games with a few home runs. Now if that spark kind of ignites into something bigger in the second half, just call that first half and put it behind him, a slow start. You may be looking at another diamond reborn here. I'm buying on Ian Desmond of the Rangers. If he can stay as hot as a Texas summer, then Desmond's overall could easily keep rising. Just remember though, that Joanna Cespedes, a fantastic hitter as well, is only an 89 overall in center field. It's just a sign that good hitters may not get rewarded as much in that center field position. In Boston, I'm selling on Jackie Bradley Jr. Now he hit 380 in the month of May when he went on that crazy hitting streak, but since then he dropped 160 points in his batting average from May to June, hitting under 220 that month. The chance of going gold right now is a long ways off in the future, even though he's only one point away in the overall. I don't see it happening, if at all, this season. In right field, I'm buying on John Carlos Stanton. We all saw what he did in the home run derby. So as long as he didn't waste every ounce of strength, I'd say there's a really good shot at 40 home runs from this year. Now the thing is, he's already got great power numbers in the show. So the question will be, can he raise his average along with the contact? We know he can do it. Recently he had four home runs in two games. The power potential, not a problem. It's that contact and that vision. In Houston, I am buying on George Springer. As the Astros stay in contention, Springer may actually start to get that national publicity he really deserves at this point in his young career. He's a five-tool star, and he's going to be on pace for 35 home runs. He's already got the speed and fielding to really help his overall and MLB the show climb up and up and up. So I'd invest now in Springer. All right, I've got a mixed one here with Mookie Betts. I'm buying on Mookie Betts, Boston Red Sox's right fielder, only if developers move up his arm strength. How are we going to know that? We really won't but it's really too low to be a right fielder right now. He can't go diamond, in my opinion, because of it. He could be a diamond in left field right now if they move his position for some reason in real life, but that may not happen either. So if those two things don't happen, I'm actually gonna be selling on Mookie Betts despite the incredible year he's having, the diamond potential he already possesses, but I'm just worried about that overall rating being stuck because of the position and the defense. And my last right fielder to talk about is Carlos Gonzalez of the Rockies. I'm selling. For the same reason, really, as Robinson Cano. He can't hit lefties. 
as well as he does righties, so he kind of sets that ceiling for himself in that overall, it can't go up very much. So even though if he has good contact and power against righties, that's great for the game and you may love him as a platoon player, but that overall is going to be stuck where it is. Let's go to starting pitching. I got two to buy and two to sell. I'm buying on Johnny Cueto in a pitcher-friendly park. It's an even year with the Giants. We know what that means. I think Cueto is poised for a fantastic second half. If there's one pitcher I would bet on going diamond, the stars are all aligning for Johnny. And in, in LA, I'm going to pick a young one here, Kenta Maeda. Just before the All-Star break, he had his most dominating performance of the year, striking out 13. Yeah, it was against San Diego, but he has the pedigree to keep rising in the second half, kind of like we saw Noah Syndergaard do last year. It'll depend on consistency and health. Now I'm going to be selling on Sonny Gray. If Sonny figures out in the second half, he may be able to salvage his injury-filled season, but I'm not seeing a lot of upside here for now, and I don't know if he can really put it back together this season. Still a great future, though, for Gray. Pittsburgh Pirates starter Garrett Cole is on the mend right now, and it's possible he comes back from his triceps injury, but unless he turns into an innings eater, which he's never really been, I don't see much more than a middle-tier goal the rest of the way at best. Let's go to closer now, and I'm going to give you one to buy and a couple to sell on. The first one is Cody Allen of the Indians. They're going to make a serious run at the playoffs, and that means a lot of save chances, so they're going to let Cody Allen prove that he can shut the door to close those tight games. And with all those save chances, we're going to find out if he's really worthy of being upgraded from silver to gold. The opportunities there, it's a matter of do you believe in him? I do. I'm going to be selling on David Robertson of the White Sox. His save numbers are still there, but as we know in the show, they look at a lot of other metrics besides that number of saves. And he's had a few rough bumps. This is just a total gut call for me. I'm going to say Robertson does not have a great second half and could go down to silver. It's possible. And one guy who has fallen already is Trevor Rosenthal, and I'm just telling you guys to stay away. He's not the same dominating closer he used to be. He still has that name value, and I don't really see the Cardinals turning back to him unless they have some kind of meltdown on their bullpen. So I'm staying away and selling on Trevor Rosenthal. So those are my buy and sell candidate predictions for the second half. Take them or leave them. Leave your comments below. And I'm looking forward to the second half with you guys in MLB The Show 16.